Hey everybody, it's our four year anniversary. Woo! Four years and still going strong. I can't believe we made it this far. Some of you probably didn't think we would make it this far. And if that's you, come on, have a little faith. I'm no quitter. To everyone who has stuck around for four years, thank you. And thank you to everyone who has recently discovered the channel and come on board. I am sincerely happy to have you here. Uh, this is a journey that we have all taken together uh, with me starting out as a novice G.I. Joe toy collector and just learning and sharing. And in return, a lot of you have shared your experiences with me. It's been a great four years. So what are we doing special for our four-year anniversary? Nothing really, just reviewing the manta ray. Four years isn't really a milestone year, but five years is. Next year we're going to have to plan something big for the fifth anniversary, and I hope you're all still here to celebrate with me. For now, we have a review to do, so let's get to it. everybody, Hood of Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this week we are reviewing a 90s vehicle. I haven't done a lot of reviews on 90s vehicles, so now is the time. I actually had the box for the Manta Ray before I had the vehicle itself. A viewer named Tyrell White sent the box to me. I was intrigued, so I went ahead and bought the Manta Ray to go with it. Thank you, Tyrell, for sending the Manta Ray box. Now we will find out if the vehicle lives up to my expectations. Uh, HCC788 presents the Manta Ray. This is the 1994 G.I. Joe Manta Ray. This vehicle was first introduced in 1994 and was only available in 1994. The vintage G.I. Joe toy line that began in 1982 was discontinued after the 1994 series. It had a good run. It lasted longer than most toy lines, but G.I. Joe still wasn't able to accomplish the sustained, uninterrupted, multi-generational success that Barbie did for Mattel. This vehicle is part of the Battle Corps subset, which really just means it isn't part of any of the sub-teams. Battle Corps was just a way to designate the core G.I. Joe line, as distinguished from all the tangents. By 1994, G. G.I. Joe was very fractured and unfocused. This vehicle is basically a raft, but it's a little unusual in that it is inflatable. You're supposed to fill it with air and it will float. There were other rafts in G.I. Joe. The 1991 figure Tracker had a rubber inflatable raft. In 1985, Cobra had the night landing vehicle and accessories set. It included a raft, but it was solid plastic, not inflatable. I prefer the solid plastic. The Manta Ray, in my experience, is difficult to inflate. The Manta Ray almost shares a name with an earlier G.I. Joe vehicle. In 1984, G.I. Joe had the Manta, which was a wind sailing board. It was available exclusively as a mail-away offer. The name isn't exactly the same. This is the Manta, and this is the Manta Ray. An earlier G.I. Joe watercraft that's about the same size as the Manta Ray would be the 1986 Devil fish, though the devil fish is slightly smaller. The devil fish came from the golden age of G.I. Joe toys, so there is a contrast in the sharpness and the crispness of the details between these two vehicles. As much as the bright colors of 90s G.I. Joe toys is criticized, and I think justifiably, this 1986 vehicle does have the bright orange. Inflatable motorized rafts are used by the military, so this type of vehicle is not unusual. The Manta Ray, however, has some toyish elements that you won't find on a real military raft. The Manta Ray isn't just a raft. The motor really works. Sort of. The Manta Ray is rubber band powered. 
By twisting a rubber band attached to the propeller, the manta ray could move through the water. We'll see how well that works later. This is not an original rubber band that came with the manta ray, by the way. This is my rubber band that I put on here. A rubber tends to dry out and break down over the years. It's going to be kind of difficult to find a vintage rubber band for the manta ray. And even if you did find one, if you tried to use it, it would probably break. Rubber band powered toys have been around for a long time. It's a primitive technology, but it can be used effectively. One example of a good rubber band powered toy is Thunderstreak by the toy company Ideal. Thunderstreak. Thunderstreak? Thunderstreak. Thunderstreak? Thunderstreak. The new super speed hydrofoil with five position hydrofins you set for action. Rev up high powered prop. Position rudder. Check your course. Thunderstreak speeds across water. For submarine action, it crash dives underwater. I think the Thunderstreak is a pretty cool looking toy. I wouldn't mind having one. Looks like it gets quite a bit of speed out of its rubber band powered propeller. Can the manta ray match the power of the Thunderstreak? We'll find out in this video. Thanks to Tyrell White, I have the box for this vehicle. So let's take a look at it and see how the manta ray was marketed back in 1994. Uh, the first thing I have to note uh, is the box art isn't up to the standards of vehicle box art from the 1980s. Uh, without the explosion background, the image loses a lot of its energy and depth. You have a black background that fades to blue with only little puffs of white around the boat to indicate that it's in water. They also have Flint version 4 on the raft. This Flint is a desert themed figure, so of course they put him on a boat. The interior of the boat is backwards. The control panel is on the port side and the torpedo launcher is on the starboard side. That's the reverse of the toy. I thought maybe this image was painted the other way and they reversed it, but the flag is on the correct side, so they just did it wrong. We have the G.I. Joe logo on the side and we have the Battle Corps logo over that. At least they didn't shrink down the G.I. Joe logo like the Star Brigade vehicles did. Torpedo launcher shoots, wind up powered. We'll see about that. We have two flag points on the top. You'd have to use these quickly because the toy line was about to end. The top of the box and the sides include a description of the vehicle that is not on the front of the box. It says Navy SEAL attack boat. A vehicle like this would work fine for Navy SEALs. G.I. Joe's Navy SEALs were usually equipped for deep sea diving. I guess you could use this to deploy them on a diving mission. Looking at the back of the box, we see a photo of the toy. This is mostly the same as the vehicle that came out of the box. There are minor differences. The inflatable part of the raft looks like it's made of plastic. There is no air nozzle. Contrast the box art for the manta ray with the box art for the 1986 devilfish, and there is a huge difference. By 1986, they were using this digital explosion background rather than the original explosion background. But you can see that this lighter color, the reds and yellows in the back, uh, really makes its pop much better than this black to blue color gradient on the manta ray art. Plus, the vehicle is just rendered better. Uh, it's more dynamic. Uh, the box art for the 90s really took a step backward. Let's look at the parts and the features of the manta ray, and let's start with the raft. That is the main body of the vehicle, uh, this inflatable portion. It is made of what feels like a vinyl material. Uh, it is black on the top and aqua blue on the bottom and on the inside. Uh, it is inflatable. It has an air nozzle here uh, on the back and uh, you're supposed to inflate it like a beach ball. There is a sharp seam that divides the top from the bottom. Really, this inflatable raft is the boat. The plastic parts just clip onto it. It's difficult to inflate this raft. It's small so it doesn't take much air, uh, but it's not easy to seal the nozzle before enough air escapes to flatten the boat. This causes two problems. First, it can make the boat sink. Second, these side panels need the raft to be inflated to clip on properly. If there isn't enough air in the raft, they'll fall off. Up here in front, we have what the blueprints call the bulletproof top side canopy. I haven't mentioned the most obvious problem with this vehicle, so I'll point it out now. The plastic pieces, all of them, are in bright neon green. This is terrible. Even if the rest of the vehicle worked great, the color would drag it down. 
You have a nice black raft for night missions, and it's totally ruined by the bright green plastic. This would have looked a thousand times better in another color, perhaps black. It would have been a great night attack vehicle. We have some molded in headlights up here in front, and we have some rope details along the sides. We have a G.I. Joe logo sticker uh, with the vehicle name Manta Ray in a black circle behind it. I hate to keep bringing back the Devilfish, but just look at the Devilfish logo next to this Manta Ray logo. A lot more effort went into the Devilfish. In the interior of the boat on the starboard side, we have what the blueprints call a control console with dual steering grips, and that is exactly what it is. We have some molded in instruments. We have a radar screen sticker. Uh, we also have um, on the space uh, just underneath the control panel um, a pretty nice Battle Core logo with anchors on it. Uh, I actually kind of like that. That looks pretty nice. Um, I would, wouldn't mind seeing this as like a unit insignia uh, for Battle Corps Navy figures. These control sticks are probably small enough to fit in an action figure's hands, but the control panel is actually a little too low to easily fit the control sticks in a figure's hand. Uh, this is a standing control panel. Uh, there is no seat. Yes, there is no driver's seat. The driver gets a foot peg on the floorboard and you just peg the figure on the foot peg in front of the control panel. Uh, and that's it. There is no other way to secure the driver in the boat. And I'm not 100% confident that this foot peg will hold the figure in the boat in rough waters. Foot pegs are a little hit and miss on how well they secure the figures on. On the other side we have what the blueprints call a front mounted supercharged torpedo launcher. I like that this is a torpedo launcher and not a rocket launcher. It is spring powered and it really shoots. We'll show you that later. It has two grips. Uh, I would be cautious about putting an action figure's hands on those grips. They're a little bit thicker than the grips on the control panel. There's a third peg here, but I'm not sure that's supposed to be a grip for the figure. I think that might just be a detail. There is a sticker targeting control in the space between the launcher and the control console, and there is no seat for the gunner. We have another foot peg for the gunner, and this one is a little more problematic than the one for the control console. It's a little too far center uh, for a figure if you put it on his left foot uh, to uh, really, he's not behind the gun. To get the figure behind the gun, you have to kind of push the raft over, if you can even do it. It's really hard to line up, um, and once he's on there, he's more, uh, more in command of the gun. Uh, but now the raft itself, the inflatable part, is pressing against the figure and that's going to make him even less secure on that foot peg. The vehicle comes with three of what the blueprints call lock-on torpedoes. Um, they are in that bright green plastic, the same as all of the plastic on this vehicle. I didn't realize before doing this review that this vehicle is incomplete. It should have three torpedoes, I only have two. But since the torpedoes are all identical, you're not missing anything. Just cross your eyes until you see three. The torpedo launcher can pivot, but not all the way around. It's impeded by a loop of hose that runs from the main body of the launcher to the barrel. I don't know why that's there really, it's just an obstruction, uh, and it's a piece that looks like it could break off. I can see some white plastic stress marks on mine. These torpedoes look like pretty standard spring-loaded missiles, we got a lot of those in the 90s. But the fins do have kind of a twist, so you could imagine these propelling through the water. Let's demonstrate how the spring-loaded torpedo launcher works by using our favorite target, Dr. Mindbender, uh, for target practice. Uh, you just take the torpedo, press it into the barrel of the launcher, keep pressing back until it clicks. Uh, the trigger is here in the back and you press down, just aim, press down, and fire. Well, I missed. Fortunately, I have two torpedoes, so let's take another shot at Dr. Mindbender there. Push it until it clicks, aim, and fire. 
Well, I hit him, but he's still standing. Too bad I don't have that third torpedo. The torpedoes have dumbbell-shaped slots, and they peg on to these side panels that are clipped on to the sides of the raft. These side panels have uh, two clips on the outside, one on the inside. Uh, and the outside clips have some stickers uh, for some added color, and that's nice. Uh, it's also nice to have a way to store these torpedoes when you're not using them. Uh, they just uh, peg on like standard old-fashioned G.I. Joe missiles. Um, they are not too in the way there, and that's how it looks with the torpedoes mounted on the side panels. These side panels themselves are pretty problematic. They do want to fall off. They are just clipped onto the raft, and of course the raft is a bit flexible. Uh, it doesn't always inflate very well, uh, so these are going to fall off pretty easily. We have the deck inside the raft. It runs the length of the boat, but not the width. It's kind of a narrow strip in there. Uh, it has a raised dot pattern, and in addition to the two foot pegs up in the front for the driver and the uh, torpedo launcher, there are four additional foot pegs. If you use one foot peg per figure, you can fit six figures in this boat, but I am not confident uh, these foot pegs can hold these figures in the boat. Uh, is since there are no seats at all and you can only stand the figures in the boat, if you're going to put figures in the back, I would suggest only two figures uh, behind the driver and the gunner uh, and use uh, one foot peg per foot. That might make them a little more secure. Next we have the flag post and flag. It's pretty tall and again the flag post is made out of that same neon green plastic. It attaches to the boat at the back next to the motor. It also has this angled protrusion and I don't know exactly what that's for. The flag itself is not quite an American flag. It looks a little like an American flag. It has a blue field with a lot of stars, not quite enough stripes. Uh, it's narrow and it has two points. Uh, we'll just say it was inspired by the American flag, but some artistic license was taken. Finally, we get to the motor in the back. It's an outboard motor with a removable engine cover, similar to the Devilfish. Uh, you can just pull it off, and you do see some engine detail. And this is where having all the plastic that same color is a bit of a problem. Uh, if this engine had been done in a darker color, it would have helped pick out those details a little bit better. Uh, since it's all that very bright green, some of the details just kind of wash out. In the back you have a propeller, a three-blade propeller, uh, and it is attached to that rubber band underneath, so you can wind that propeller to uh, add tension to the rubber band. Um, you have to actually wind it quite a bit to put enough tension on the rubber band to spin the propeller. Uh, unfortunately, this motor does not turn, and I think that is too bad because since this is supposed to go through the water and you know, really uh, move with this propeller, it would have been nice if the motor would turn so you could give it some direction. Underneath, there is a hull of sorts, but it's really just kind of a thin band of plastic with raised sides, and you can see how the rubber band attaches. There are a couple hooks on the hull, and there is a hook on the propeller. Uh, and you just basically just uh, wind that propeller until there is enough tension on the rubber band uh, to spin the propeller blades back. Uh, it actually takes quite a bit of tension on that rubber band to give it enough power to spin that blade. But once you have it wound tight enough, you should be able to let it go and the blade will spin. As you can see, after the initial burst of speed, most of the energy of this rubber band is expended and then it has a hard time turning this propeller. I do think that will affect how this boat moves through the water. Yeah, see, it loses energy really fast and then the best it can do is turn that propeller very slowly. It may also be the type of rubber band that I'm using. I don't know what type of rubber band initially came with this vehicle, but this is just a standard rubber band. The media discussion on this vehicle is easy. It had no animated appearances. I don't know of any comic book appearances either. If you know of any comic appearances, please let me know in the comments. I'm open to correction on that. But to my knowledge, it was not animated, nor did it see print. Okay, I'm outdoors to test if this thing will float. I have the the largest vessel that I can get here uh, and so we're gonna also test the motor and see if that works 
It's kind of a windy day, so hopefully that doesn't spoil the audio. Uh, but here it is. We're going to give it a shot. Now, before you ask, uh, no, I am not putting figures in this. Uh, I did try to put the figures in here, but I could not get them to stay on those foot pegs. So we're going to have to test it without figures. First, let's see if it will float, then we'll test the motor. Okay, the manta ray. Will it float? Yes, uh, floats pretty well. Uh, even, uh, it might be underinflated, but uh, I've got enough air in there that it will float. With this much air in it, you may even have a hard time making it sink. Uh, it should float very well, and it does. Now let's see if this little propeller will move this boat through the water. It's wound pretty tight, and I'm pretty sure I wound it in the correct direction to move it forward. Uh, so uh, let's put it in the water. I'm going to put it at this end and see if it will move the boat in that direction. So let's let it go. Ah, uh, no, well, the problem I have is the wind. The wind keeps blowing it, and I need it to kind of, I'm trying to test the motor, not the wind. Uh, so let's try it again. Uh, now we'll release it and see if it moves. Let's go. It did move. It did move. Ah, uh, but in the water, this has even an even harder time. Uh, the rubber band has an even harder time spinning the propeller. Uh, the resistance of the water uh, is uh, putting more... Uh, pressure on it so it's not releasing its energy as easily. I guess it sort of works. That's the best I can say for it. Looking at the Manta Ray overall, oh, I have to put it in the bottom tier. What else can I do? It's just got too many problems. I like the idea of an inflatable raft, but the thing just has loads of flaws. The raft is not easy to inflate, and if you underinflate it, that will affect how well the boat floats and how well the pieces clip onto the raft. No seats. You have no way to secure the figures in the boat. No back pegs, no seat belts. You only have foot pegs and they do not work well. The entire time I was shooting this review, I was not able to get the figures to stand in the boat very well at all, no matter how I arranged them. This is a three gimmick vehicle. The first gimmick is the inflatable raft. The second gimmick is the spring-loaded torpedo launcher. And the third gimmick is the rubber band powered motor. And of those three gimmicks, only the torpedo launcher really works as it says on the tin. The raft kind of works as long as you can get it inflated well enough. The propeller kind of works, but even at its best, it is underpowered. It's neon green. The 90s just could not help themselves. If your gimmicks are not going to work very well, you got to at least give us a good looking vehicle. This vehicle with black plastic would have been a pretty cool looking night mission vehicle. It could have been G.I. Joe's belated answer to the Cobra night landing. I think I would have liked it in black, even if the other gimmicks didn't work all that well. There are things from the 90s that I like. Really. Sadly, this is not one of them. That was my review of the Manta Ray. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video isn't too short for this week. And some people may have tuned in expecting a huge crazy rant. But this vehicle didn't make enough of an impression on me to really rant about it. Next week's review, however, may be rant-worthy. Thank you, Tyrell, for the box, and thank you to everyone who watches these videos. Thank you for four great years. I look forward to four more. Don't forget to find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon, and my website, hcc788.com. I'll see you next week for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And remember, even in 1994, only G.I. Joe was G.I. Joe. Can you handle the Matador Mayhem Machine? The Joes wrap the rapids in the motorized manta ray. Sleek, stealthy, and armed to the gills. A Cobra bites back with the sinister scorpion and its super stinging missile launcher. Zipcord yeah! razor blade races to the rescue. Attack chopper, Cobra stopper, battle core, land, sea, air, more machines, more mayhem, more action than you can handle. Wow! Let's go for it! G.I. Joe razor blade, manta ray, and Cobra scorpion each sold separately. Go for that, Thunderstreak. Thunderstreak? Thunderstreak. Thunderstreak?